They can take out the trash, cook us dinner, and feed the dog. They can even make us laugh, smile, or cry. No, I'm not talking about our loved ones. I'm talking about robots, which are becoming more intelligent and socially aware. Some even say we'll soon have robots as our lovers. So, could you have an emotional relationship with a robot? The answer might surprise you. In terms of people having emotions for those robots, people fall in love with their cars, and it's a different kind of love than for other people. But it's a real emotion, and it's a real thing. I think we need to be looking at. Takayama, with Willow Garage's help, is building robots that can help you with household chores and go to the office while you work from home. And that's just the beginning. Researchers around the world are trying out robots that care for the elderly, and there are even people working on sex robots. Dr. Human Samani, a pioneer in the field of lovotics, melding love and robotics, is creating robots that can actually kiss humans to let lovers smooch from afar. He's also testing robots that love and are loved by people. But what would make us bond with robots? In part, it's the same thing that makes us bond with people. The ability to learn and use appropriate social cues. If the robot succeeds at opening a door so that it can do a task for you, it could look a little bit happy, and that can actually help with the way that that robot feels appealing and approachable. Same thing where if it fails, right? If that robot at least looks like it feels a little bad about failing, that increases the appeal and approachability and perceived competence of that robot. As it turns out, Emily Post could have a thing or two to teach a robot. Just like people, robots can alienate us by seeming rude and abrasive, interrupting, crowding us in hallways, or just running away. They have no manners. They don't know anything about social intelligence. So a robot that's trying to say navigate a hallway will just barrel through the middle of that group of people talking. And it's not because it's trying to be rude, but it is perceived as rude. Scientists like Takayama are now trying to teach robots manners and social skills, like how to give a human the right personal space. But here's the catch: even people with bad manners have the advantage of being able to pick up on things robots can't, like facial cues, tone of voice, and body language. So, do these bots stand a chance? There's a lot of subtlety in things like just timing, knowing when to talk, knowing when to listen, knowing when someone wants to interact with you, and knowing when they'd rather withdraw and be on their own. But it's hard for people, and it's going to be hard for robots too. So the real question is: Would you make a robot your best friend? Tell us what you think.